Hi, this is Dave Vellante. We're back at the Hack Reduce launch. Big data after dark. We're here with Justin Borgman, who's the CEO of Adapt. We were down at Strata a couple weeks ago. Adapt won the best big data startup award from uh, the O'Reilly Media. Uh, we're here, Justin. Congratulations, first of all, on that. Thank you. I appreciate it. You, know, you guys, guys must be, we talked about this at Strata, but you know the afterglow is it's still shining. I can tell you guys are really excited about that. And we're here at Hack Reduce. You know, I know you've been very supportive of this initiative. So, uh, what do you think? Absolutely. I mean, it's great to be here. I think it's a great event for Boston. And, you know, certainly Chris Lynch, who's been very involved with this, is also a board member for us. So we're hugely supportive of the Hack Reduce initiative. Yeah, so um, I mentioned Strata before. You guys made a big announcement bringing sort of NoSQL and SQL together, the big trend, bringing real time to, to Hadoop. Everybody's going after that. So I announced them from Cloudera. You guys are really, you know, out there. What are customers telling you that they want and how are you guys helping them deliver that? Yeah, I mean, I think that's absolutely the future. How can you build interactive applications on Hadoop in a way that, you know, analysts can can interpret that data? You know, I think there's always been this challenge in the Hadoop space of, you know, I need to find these extremely talented technical individuals who can write MapReduce programs, and they're in very short supply. I was just speaking with someone actually here at the event tonight, a uh, CTO of a, a local startup, who's saying that same thing. It's very hard to hire these people, and that's that's really what we're trying to do: is make that easier, more consumable for the for the analysts using. SQL to access that data in Hadoop. So the other part of what you're doing, you, you showed a demo, we had Ming Shang on, and he was showing a demo of, of bringing together all kinds of different tool sets, one of which was a, a visualization tool from Tableau. Big Data's promise is that it's going to bring insights that, that are actionable to business users. Why did the business intelligence, data warehousing, traditional business fail at that, and why will Big Data, you know, this new industry succeed? Yeah, I mean, I think part of it is access to new data that really doesn't fit into those traditional systems. And that's a lot of that unstructured data. How can I make sense of social media, emails, news articles? How can I access that and, and bring that in to create a more holistic view of my business? And I think that's part of the potential of, of big data. Yeah, and, and we were talking to uh, uh, Daniel Abadi before. You know, you're one of your founders, and, and he was helping us, you know, sort of describing the, the evolution that, that, that he sees, how do you uh, take customers from where they are today to that vision that you guys are putting forth? Yeah, I mean, I think that's absolutely right. I think right now you see so many people still in that kind of experimentation phase with big data, and I think it's enabling them to use you know, real use cases that deliver business value. And, and once you have business owners within the organization, you know, asking to do these projects, I think that's really where it starts to catch, catch some real mainstream traction. So, you know, CMOs saying, I want to do better analysis on, you know, this particular part of my business. So I think that's the opportunity. Do you think CMOs are going to have a bigger budget for big data than, than, than CIOs? And, and, and how does that change the way in which you go to market? I think that's certainly true. I mean, there's been a lot written about that, and people are talking about that idea. I think that there's a lot of momentum in that direction. Uh, I think that the IT organization will continue to be involved in that technology selection, but ultimately, you know, we'd like to be able to sell to, to both of them, you know, really enable that business use case, and then, you know, hopefully prove it out in the technology selection as well. What do you say to the, the, the CIOs that are looking at big data? They may be trying to figure out how to monetize it, what data sources they have, what to do with it. It's early on in the game. What do you recommend? Yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, take your time to understand what's out there. It's incredibly noisy, and I think that just makes their job harder to try to understand all the different technologies to choose from. But, you know, the proof is in the pudding. You know, when you do that POC process and, and you've got a real business use case behind it, you'll understand whether or not that can deliver on, on the business value. Well, you've, we've mentioned business value a couple of times. You guys are taking a different approach. I mean, the Hadoop community, it's, a, it's this open source world. You guys have chosen to add value in a, in a different way. You're certainly friendly to, to open source, but you're adding some value in, in, in ways that are, are, are not open source. You're closed sourcing a lot of your code. Talk about the business value that that drives. Sure. So, you know, I mean, we would characterize it as sort of open core. There's the, the open source Hadoop distribution, but we are trying to build, you know, proprietary value on top of that. 
and that's where our investments go from an engineering perspective. We are a product company, not a services company. That's one of the ways that we think we differentiate in the market. Um, but you know, in doing so, one of the things we've built is what we've called the HADAP Development Kit, which we were talking about at Strata, which is a way to use SQL functions to, to do some of these more advanced analytics that Hadoop offers. And so you can, you can express these more advanced things like machine learning, sentiment analysis, text search, all through SQL functions. Yeah, so that's critical. So you, you, you're going to get ISVs writing to that the HDK. So give us an update on that. How's that going, and, and where do you see it going? Uh, it's going very well. You know, we're working very hard on continuing to build that out. We've, we've populated uh, you know, a few functions so far that customers can work with. We're going to continue to expand that. And that's really the, the part that we're looking forward to building an open community where other customers and users and partners can contribute additional functions uh, to that library. Yeah, the demo you guys showed at Strata was awesome. We have it, we have it on theCUBE, you can check that out, you know, go search for that. And, um, and, and, and I think that you know, your point about adding some of that proprietary value, you're not a services company, you really are a software company, and, and you're incubating and accelerating some of that innovation. Um, Talk about where you see some of the early use cases for HADAP. Sure, so some of the early use cases we've seen so far around log file analysis, sort of security, fraud detection use cases uh, in, in large financial services companies. And then on the uh, sort of e-tail, retail, internet side, a lot of customer behavior analytics. How can I understand you know, the behavior that's going on online, maybe even tying that in with offline behavior, social media, all these different data sources to better understand and predict customer behavior and market to them in a very individualized, personalized way. My last question, Justin. You chose, you chose Boston, you know, specifically Cambridge. Um, it was a big decision, obviously. You know, you guys came up from New Haven. I know you were a big advocate of that. How has that affected your hiring, the talent pool? Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's a great point. When we first started, we were in New Haven. We knew we had to kind of go somewhere, and Silicon Valley and Boston were the two logical choices. We made a very concerted effort to move up here, primarily because we think there's there's a great untapped resource here of database talent. So many database companies, great database companies that have been formed and more recently acquired in this area, you know, Natiza and Vertica and Deca and so forth, and, and it's just a rich community. And, and on top of that, the academic you know potential here with MIT and Harvard and so many great schools, it's been great from a hiring perspective. We absolutely love being here. It's amazing how database is hot again, isn't it? Yes. It yeah, it's very cool. All right, Justin, thanks very much for coming on. I really appreciate your time. All right, keep it right there. Big data after dark. We'll be back with more from the Hack Reduce launch after this.